Great. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, TED Talks with Educators. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Pamela Sivins, and I'm going to be facilitating today's webinar. Uh, our guests will share how their districts have adapted their mentoring models and instituted new relationship-centered interventions to support schools during virtual learning and as they prepare for the upcoming academic year, which starts in just a couple of weeks. So before we get started, I wanted to share some housekeeping information. All attendees are muted for the best sound quality. However, we really do want this to be a participatory experience. So please use the question box on your control panel to ask questions or submit any comments throughout the webinar. I will be queuing up questions to share with panelists during their Q&A portion of the webinar. So the panelists will um, actually do their presentation and then we'll do about five to seven minutes of question and answer and then we'll go on to the next one. The questions that we share with our panelists are generally ones that broaden or deepen the conversation. So in addition, this webinar is being recorded. And in about one week, you'll receive an email with information about how to download a copy of the slides and view the webinar recording. So on that note, let's get started. So we are excited to have you uh, have all of you here with us today. In the next hour, we're going to be sharing how two school districts are adapting to sort of their new normals as schools open in the coming weeks. And we thought it would be fun to do a TED Talk style webinar and have our guests share their own personal stories and approaches to their work, at the same time sharing what is going to be happening for them over the next um, year or so as they move forward into our new normal. And as I shared before, my name is Pamela. Uh, I'm currently working with Mentor and supporting the American Student Assistance Funded Relationship Centered Schools project that we have going on. And I am really excited to be a part of the project because in this time when there is very little I am certain about day to day, I do know that supportive, caring, healthy relationships inside and outside of schools for our young people, really for all of us, are going to be more important than ever. And so uh, let me introduce our first presenter. Uh, her name is Michelle Robirge. Uh, Michelle is the District Volunteer Coordinator for Pinellas County Schools in Florida. She has been doing this work for 20 years, and annually she manages 25,000 volunteers and mentors supporting students in her county. Michelle is truly an advocate for our young people, and she's an advocate for family engagement in her district and beyond. Michelle, thank you for being with us this afternoon, and take it away. Okay, hi everyone, and thank you so much, Pam, uh, for this opportunity. So I wanna give you a little background. About five years ago, um, the director of our department came into my office and asked me to implement a virtual, virtual mentoring program. I kind of looked at a cross-eyed and thought, oh, why would we wanna be doing that? Face-to-face -face is the best way for mentors and students to really have an impact. Um, People's time, I know, is really limited, um, but it, it, the, it, the impact is really about that relationship, being able to look someone in the face, to be able to feel their body chemistry, to just to know what's going on. But she thought virtual mentoring um, trainings would be easier for people to attend. She thought partners would be able to uh, provide that extra um, availability for them to meet with their students virtually as well as face-to-face. -face. And it would expand our opportunity to recruit more business partners in our community. Um, and also we have a lot of snowbirds. They don't show up until Thanksgiving and then they leave in April. So this would allow our snowbirds also to start mentoring when school started um, and then to um, continue even though they went up north uh, to the summer. So we put together a plan to implement the virtual, virtual mentoring program. Uh, we used a platform called Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, we did a, a quick demo recording of what a virtual mentoring session would look like. We presented it to our school board, to the superintendent. They loved it. They thought this was the 
best thing. Um, felt like we were on the cutting edge. Um, so I kind of put it on the shelf because again, my feeling was face-to-face -face was really what was more impactful. Um, sparingly over the past year and a half, I kind of did a lot of uh, mentor training webinars. Um, and, and for the most part, I have to say they were pretty successful. And where I would have maybe 20 to 30 people do an in-house in, um, in kind of uh, workshop, when we did a webinar, we could have up to 40 to 60 people um, coming into the webinar. So recruitment wise, it made it easier for people to attend uh, the webinars. When we shut down in March, this worked out so well for us because we already had kind of a base plan to start off with. Uh, we kind of knew what were what things that we had to do, what logistics we had to make, um, what things to put in place for schools to be able to uh, provide this additional resources for our students. We also knew that mentoring was going to play a really important role where kids were now at home experiencing uh, losses in learning growth, uh, developmental uh, losses, peer isolation, and really social emotional trauma that they were going to be experiencing. So many, you can go to the next slide. So before the shutdown, we had about 3,400 students who were being mentored weekly throughout our district. Uh, we have a really involved community. We are really fortunate. So we needed to make sure that the platforms that we used were accessible, they were easy, that they could accommodate one-on-one -on -one sessions, group, breakout rooms, um, and that our mentors could easily download um, and, and use these, these platforms. So of course, our school district was using Microsoft Teams uh, for their internal communications. Um, we did use the free Zoom uh, platform. Um, and I laugh because of course, in the very beginning, like I'm sure all of you experienced when people would be using Zoom, of course, there were a lot of these um, inappropriate people who jumped in uh, which made our principals, our teachers, our mentors, our uh, parents really nervous about Zoom. So thankfully, they implemented features to uh, put in these safety um, nets um, so that we could use the, the platforms. Uh, we also had a chat app that our Florida Foundation had been working on that they were going to actually implement sometime in the fall. Um, of next year or this year, uh, but they ramped it up and they, they put it out. And some of our mentors use this chat app. Um, and, and this was for our take stock in children's scholars and their mentors. Really tried to um, do a lot of training internally with our schools on just the technology, how to use it, how to implement it, how to um, kind of work with uh, scheduling and, and just those kinds of logistics because it was a bit crazy. Um, you know, people were really afraid, um, not just because of what happened with Zoom, but afraid just like, how does it work? You know, when people use FaceTime, it's easy. They're just pressing a little button on their phone. And when people started to work on the computers, it, it, it it was a little nerve wracking for a lot of people. So we did a lot of training the first four or five weeks um, before we actually implemented the virtual mentoring. Um, we really needed to figure out how to build capacity because a lot of our schools may have up to 100 students that were being mentored in one week. So we really wanted to make sure that they had the capacity to meet those needs of the mentors and their students because we knew that all of these sessions needed to be monitored. Um, so that, that was a big lift for a lot of our schools. Um, let me see. So not everyone was on board with doing this. Uh, we spent a fair amount of time, um, you know, talking to principals, talking to parents, getting them to feel comfortable about the technology, making our mentors feel safe because they were really concerned. Um, and, and we needed to get a lot of parents to give us permission. And, you know, in March and April, when school had shut down, it was a crazy time. People were uh, 
moving around, living, you know, kids were living with grandparents or aunts and uncles so their parents could continue to work. Um, so it took us a long time to even figure out where people were, where kids were. Um, so a lot of the scheduling, it was very time consuming. Um, so we spent a lot of time making phone calls, emailing parents, emailing mentors, uh, putting up social media posts, um, setting up news uh, media to interview us so that we could communicate what was going on and why virtual mentoring was really impactful and important for our students. We sent out a survey at the end to about 2,100 of our mentors. We really wanted to find out who was coming back, what challenges they had, what concerns they had, so we could begin to address them over the summer. Um, half of them told us, yep, yeah, I'm coming back. So we were really thankful for that. Um, a quarter of them said, not really sure, not sure I like this. I'd really rather do face to face. And, you know, that's not going to happen. Um, so, and then the rest said, you know what, we're not coming back. This was too difficult, too challenging, and face-to-face um, -face is what I want. A lot of our mentors said, we need more tips. We need more resources. So we have spent, uh, can go to the next slide. Okay, so we spent a lot of time kind of gearing up what our virtual mentoring is gonna look like this summer or this fall. So one of the th first things that we wanted to um, do was really set the expectations for our mentors and our students. And I realized right up front that maybe if we demonstrate what a virtual mentoring session looked like, it would just be much easier for people to have an understanding. Um, so we've um, set up a, a a mentor and a mentee and we did a whole session and, and we're going to be showing our mentors what that looks like and when i thought about it you know i've written some manuals for our volunteer system and i realized i've never read the manuals i might have written some of the content but i don't like reading manuals i want someone to show me what it looks like so i know that that is going to be really impactful and helpful for our mentors um, so when they start doing the virtual mentoring I also realized that our students, they didn't really respond even face to face well with why they have to have a mentor. So we're putting together um, another webinar session just to talk to our students about what the importance of having a mentor is. Um, what does that mean and why would it be impactful for you? Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to see if that kind of makes a difference having those students get that training so that they will show up, uh, be present. Um, a lot of times, even in our in-school mentoring, you know, kids would leave school early, even though their mentor was supposed to meet with them on that day, or they just wouldn't show up at all, um, or they'd go be hanging out in the cafeteria with their friends. Um, and it's not, I don't think that they didn't want to be around their mentor. I think, you know, it's, kids being kids um, and then when they were at home doing their um, virtual learning uh, most of the time they would sleep all day and do their schoolwork all night and hang out with their friends all night so it, it was really difficult for us to make that connection with them i'll just you know even my own student that i mentor who's in the seventh grade We'd have to have her mom call her to wake her up because her mom would be at work and she would take her cell phone, get on the virtual mentoring and she would be under the covers uh, with her dragon lizard um, and spend a few minutes talking with me. So we really need to um, really talk with our students so they really understand why um, they have a mentor and why it's important for them. The, the other thing that we realized um, in our training is that we want to be much more intentional, especially with what has been going on over the past several months. So we're really expanding our training to talk much more in depth about our diverse population and giving people a better understanding of what culture looks like, race, lifestyle, um, and the role that all of this plays um, in how we mentor 
our students. So we're really, um, you know, really delving more intensely um, on our mentor trainings. Um, for recruitment, we are already out there recruiting more mentors because I need to make up for the mentors who are not coming back um, so that those students still have that additional caring adult in their lives. <clears throat> so we've developed flyers and social media postings. We're doing news interviews actually this Friday. Um, and, and really what we want to tell mentors is that nothing has changed. You still meet for 30 minutes with your student on a day that's convenient for you and you are making a difference in a child's life. So we will continue to push that message um, because we know how important it is. So recruitment and retention for our mentors is incredibly important. Um, we've always produced a monthly newsletter because we want to continue that conversation, um, providing resources and mentor stories so that they understand the kind of impact that they're having to their, their students. So we'll continue to reach out to our partners um, who really want to support um, our students and families. So one of the best things that happened, well, there's a couple of really great things that happened um, during this time. Well, first, we are mentor doing virtual mentoring only until the end of December. And then we'll see what's going on with our state and the virus and whether or not we can then start to slowly bring in some of our uh, mentors to meet with their students in school. And like I said, so one of the great things about what has happened is that our district this year is purchasing laptops for all of our students. So before when school was shut down, many of our students got one laptop per family. So if you had two or three brothers or sisters, you know, it was really difficult getting on that computer for that learning time or that mentoring time. So now they're going to have that opportunity to have their own laptop with a camera where they can get on at any time, not only to do their schoolwork, but to meet with their mentor. Um, the district is making sure there's going to be hotspots everywhere for everyone so that there is no um, problems with having access to Wi-Fi. So that's a really great thing for, for us. We'll do a lot of um, technical uh, training for not only the students, uh, but for our mentors ongoing. Um, our, our mentoring sessions for elementary and middle school will always be during that student's lunch. And that doesn't matter if they're in school or they're at home. Um, high school, we've indicated several different times during the school day. Uh, where we've carved out mentoring times. So we're really trying to let our principals and school staff know that these particular times, these particular days are when our students will be mentored so that they can make sure that this happens. We also have developed a toolkit. So this is um, a weekly flyer that's going to go out to all of our mentors that has a scripted theme. So our sessions are for 30 minutes, and what will happen is for the first five minutes, they'll have kind of a casual conversation where they'll catch up on things, and the mentor's always going to ask them how they're feeling um, because we really want to make sure that the, the student is in a good head space, and if they're not, we want to find out why. We'll do a 20-minute um, activity or theme that they'll discuss. The mentor can or should review the activity prior to getting um, their mentoring session. Um, as you can see on this particular one, it has kind of a link where they can do a book read and then they have a series of questions they ask afterwards. Um, if they decide they don't want to do a book read or in this case, um, she wants to talk about what worrying means, uh, what things we can control, what things we can't control, then um, they'll just have that conversation about what worrying is all about. So every week they're going to get on Sunday night, um, you know, this weekly um, activity sheet and it will be sent out to them. And, and we think that that will be a really great resource um, for our mentors. Now, not all of our schools are gonna participate in virtual mentoring uh, for one reason or another, I'm not quite sure why. Um, so those that, that do not participate, I know that there are gonna be emails that will go back and forth between mentors and students, especially in our middle and high school grades. Um, I know a lot of our mentors, because they did it um, when we 
well, schools were shut down. They'll do a lot of video recordings to check up on their students. Um, so hopefully that will continue. Uh, our school district will start school on August 24th. So we plan to jump right in with training, um, starting to schedule mentors once we know where students are and what their schedules are. So we believe that our mentoring will start, virtual mentoring will start late September and early October. So I want to talk just a little bit about additional interventions that our school district um, is doing. So when we shut down, we knew right away that we wanted not only to support our students, but we really wanted to support our families because they were also really struggling. So we did seven Family Power Hour webinars. Um, and some of them were, uh, I've listed a couple here, It's a Different World, Setting Your Home for Digital Learning, Wildly Important Wellness, Building Resilience in Challenging Times, and Oops, My Child is Off Task, Self-Discipline Strategies. Um, a lot of our uh, parents were really concerned. I think for the first time, they saw how difficult it is for teachers to be teaching kids in class. So it, I know that it was a really big struggle. We also provided uh, we have a lot of virtual uh, volunteers that are tutors. So we provide a lot of tutoring for our parents and for their students. Um, mu much of that went after school because it just was too difficult to kind of manage that during the school day. So we worked with parents to set up time so that they would be there while our tutors would help their, their students. One of the most exciting projects that we um, came up with was Career Conversations. So for those students who didn't meet up with their mentor, we wanted to provide them a forum for them to get together and to listen to uh, people in our community um, and what kind of jobs they had. So what kind of careers and how did they get to where they were today? So we had a lot of professionals like financial advisors, photographers, health administrators, lawyers, nurses, um, photographers, and they would just talk for 30 or well, 20 minutes, 25 minutes about their career path, um, how to, they got to where they, they were. And um, so the kids had the ability to ask questions at the end. They were hysterically funny. All, they always wanted to know how much money did you make? Um, they wanted to know how much education did you have to have? Um, but the most interesting thing I think about these um, career conversations is that um, education was really important that networking and meeting people in the industries that you were in was really important. And then it was always a bit of luck, like luck took me to this job or luck took me to you know, this uh, college career education. Most of the time, many people who were, went to college for a particular thing didn't even end up doing what they do today. So, and I think the kids really, really enjoyed that. We're gonna continue to do career conversations um, ongoing for this year. And then, of course, we have virtual 21st century after school program. It's an enrichment program that kids go after school um, and they do some really fantastic projects with STEM and um, have speakers come in and book reads. So that's um, a really great program. So additionally, we're working right now on doing Parent Academy webinars. And it originally, before um, even before the shutdown and COVID, we were doing face-to-face, -face, but we realized that parents weren't able to get to our meetings. So we ended up doing these webinars, Parent Academy webinars, where parents would come to do trainings. We would record them on topics that would help build a parent's capacity. Uh, we offer catalogs of webinars and a variety of topics. Uh, where parents want to know more about how they can support their children's education. We're now doing what's called the Parent Guardian Virtual Support Group, where parents can come together and talk about issues in the moment. Um, it's a forum, it's driven by parents, um, it's not really uh, uh, facilitated by a presenter, so to speak, but we really want people, uh, parents, to really connect and network with each other. And our first one is actually tonight at 5.30, so I look forward to seeing how that goes. We're going to do a lot of professional development because we want to make sure that our principals, leadership, 
uh, teachers are engaging parents virtually, making them feel welcome, making sure we're communicating with them so that they know what's going on um, and how they can help support their children. Uh, because we know during this time, you know, anything that parents do is going to enhance their child's education. So we'll be doing a lot of professional development. And then I just want to tell you a little bit about our Hooked on Family Engagement Conference. I've been involved uh, putting on this conference for the past 10 years. It happens every November here in um, the Tampa area. I belong to an organization called Alliance for Family Engagement. We comprise about 15 districts centrally located here in the west coast of Florida. And we meet once a month. Uh, we're a diverse group of educators and we share best practices on um, focusing on enhancing student achievement and supporting family engagement. So this year we're going to be doing virtual webinars for our Hooked on Family Engagement Conference. And um, I, I, I'm sure it will be wonderful. I'm a little nervous and excited all at the same time. So I want to leave you with one, uh, one thing. This is our mentor, um, Mr. Solomon. So I'll just let you play it and take a listen. Good morning. This is Mr. James saying hello to you guys. Miss you guys. I had fun with you guys. Hope everybody's doing okay. Hope your families are doing okay. Uh, hope you're able to adjust to the situation, what's going on right now. Nobody has ever experienced it before, so it's new to everybody. I hope you can keep yourselves busy, uh, use your computers, your iPads, your phones, whatever, to find interesting things to do. Again, I miss you. I know you can do what you have to do because you're very bright fellas, smart. I love you guys. I miss you guys. Take care. Enjoy your day. This is Mr. James. Bye-bye. So I just wanted to leave you with um, one, of, one of many of our wonderful mentors who um, really have impacted our students here in Pinellas County. Here's my information. Feel free to email me. I've also listed a bunch of resources um, that you can check out our websites. Um, and I know that when they said the slide deck to all of you, you'll be able to click on any of these. But please feel free to email me or um, give me a call. Thank you. Hey, Michelle, thank you so much. So now we're going to have a question and answer session. Uh, we got about five minutes here. Um, I do have one question. I'm just curious. Um, can you share the um, from one of our guests? They're wondering what the intent of the mentoring program is. Is it really around life skills? Is it um, what is it? What's the focus of it? So it, it has a couple of focus our, our program goals, but I'm going to say the most important thing is just to have an additional caring adult for a child, someone mm -hmm. that that child can talk to about anything that they want, and that person is going to sit there and just be a good listener, uh, to be a good role model. So, uh, you know, we want our students to succeed, and we know that it takes a village, so we want to provide the village for our, for our students. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. And you know, I, I'm uh, really impressed with what you're doing with families and parents and guardians. Um, I'm just really curious, have what you've done so far, has it been well attended? Are they excited about uh, what you're providing them, the resources that you're providing them? Um, what's the response been? Right, so the response has been excellent. And I've talked to other school districts in our area and the attendance, especially because it is virtual and it makes it really easy if you can just click right on. You know, we've had, uh, well, for the for the parent guardian um, program that's going on tonight at 5.30, we have over 500 people that are gonna be attending. Wow. So, yeah, a lot of good attendance. So Hillsborough County, they have been doing these parent academies as well, and they've had up to six, seven hundred people attending. 
Wow, that's great. It's it's definitely a needed I mean, resource. People are hungry. That people are hungry. They're hungry for information and knowledge and um, you know, how how do we do this? How do we make this work and and how do we make it work for our kids to be successful? And I'm just curious, you're working with kids all the way pre-K through uh, high school, or is there certain age groups that you have more mentors matched with? What's the focus? So middle school and high school is our biggest, um, but uh, you know, I would say third through fifth grade, we have quite a few mentors in, in that age range as well. We have a, a large program called Lunch Pals. So we had before COVID about 1,800 students in the elementary school level that were being mentored. So that, that's a pretty big number. Mm -hmm. And do you ever have issues with attendance or you know, are your students all anxious to see their mentors? Are their mentors very anxious and excited to see their students? How's the attendance for you guys? So, you know, I mean, we're talking about kids. So some kids, run to their mentor they're like they're in they're in they love their mentor and they're there and you know it all depends upon the student and that relationship and how long they've been together you know i can't really give you a number it all depends upon the situation you know i mentor two young girls the one girl i've been mentoring for four years when COVID hit completely disappeared we tried every way to contact her I don't know what happened. Um, hopefully when she comes back to school, we'll, we'll start again. My other young lady, you know, when I could get in touch with her, she was awesome. But, you know, when I couldn't get in touch with her, you know, it, it all depends upon the student. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mentors are always in. They are always in. You know, they are always there. They always show up. Yeah. But students, they're kids. You know, we do the best we can. Yeah, I know. Thank you so much. There are more questions here. We're running out of time. I'm going to bring in our next speaker, but I just really wanted to thank you, uh, Michelle, for sharing all this with us. I'm just really impressed with the work that you're doing. I'd love to learn more. I'm sure others would too. So you did leave your contact information and you yes. may be hearing from folks, I'm sure. So awesome. thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, so now it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Uh, that is Courtney R. Johnson. Now, Courtney is the supervisor for student life in Newark Public Schools. Uh, the district is really working hard to ensure that there are over 2,000 high school students have mentors in the coming year. Uh, she is a product of the district herself, and is, she is really committed to mentoring. Um, as she's experienced the power of having a mentor in her own life since high school. And she's going to share a little bit more about that uh, in her presentation. And so, Courtney, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Pamela, thank you so much for that warm introduction. Would you agree that people come into your life for a reason, a season, or even a lifetime? My first confirmation of this occurred in 2002. It was my senior year of high school. So picture this, prom, class pictures, yearbook, earning scholarships, decision day, and last but not least, shopping. That was the gist of the conversations I frequently had with my best friend. More than likely, we were not going to attend the same university as she wanted to become a pediatrician. She received guaranteed admissions into medical school through a partnership with Montclair State University. On the other hand, I wanted to pursue a degree in elementary education with a dual concentration in math, science, and technology at the College of New Jersey. So it was already established that we would embark on our own unique journeys to college. And then the interruption happened. While we were driving from school one day, out of nowhere, a stolen car hit our vehicle, killing Catherine on impact. I was unaware of what happened until I woke up in the hospital with my parents, pastor, 
and the medical staff standing over my bedside. I continued to ask, where was Catherine? My father then began to pray and thank God for her life. And at that very moment, I knew that she was gone. You see, Catherine was not only my best friend, she was also my twin sister. Someone I met even before we were born, who I share mostly any and everything with. To consider pressing forward with attending college while experiencing something so traumatic, so unexpected, was a circumstance I did not think I would be able to overcome. I came across an article published by the American School Counselor Association that read, before they complete high school, nine in 10 children will experience the death of a family member or close friend. One in 20 will lose a parent. This means that in every class, every year, in every school, there's likely to be at least one grieving student, if not more. How can this statistic affect the family of a class valedictorian, a student with so much promise? And then it dawned on me at the age of 17 that no one is exempt from the challenges life brings, even when you strive to be a productive citizen. So that brings me to navigating the une unexpected. Before I left home to move onto campus, Brenda, a family friend at the time, pledged to be there for me while I was away at school. As you can imagine, I heard this from many people during this transition, and I also acknowledge that support comes in many forms. Much like as to what is occurring now with social distancing, I did not see her in person. However, we did communicate regularly over the phone or via email. It was such a blessing to have a mentor, someone that I can talk to about anything, especially while grieving. At the time, I did not want to uh, concern my parents and siblings too much because I didn't want them to worry about me while I was away at school. However, this powerful resource that I had to be able to stay connected with someone and build a meaningful relationship, relationship with even remotely. Fast forward after graduating from TCNJ and starting my career in education with the North Public School District, the largest school district in New Jersey, granted me the opportunity to oversee the implementation of the district-wide plan for one-to-one -one student mentoring and tracking. Mentoring is not a new concept for our district. We observed various pockets of greatness throughout the district, but it wasn't enough. In efforts to maximize resources, the impact of student support systems, we partnered with Mentor Nork under the leadership of Thomas Owens to create a mentoring app. Technology has influenced the trajectory of this once in-person session that has now expanded to making remote sessions possible with less considerations on time, location, travel, and expense. The mentoring app designed by a former student Jamar Youngblood was launched at one of our high schools back in 2017 as a means for students to connect with their mentors. The app pushes out weekly goals, spotlights, success stories, resources, and has a gamification component on the leaderboard, which I've won a couple of times with my mentee. The first app, monitored conversations, tracked the alignment with the mentoring curriculum, was managed by our mentoring coordinator at the school, and it also collected statistics. The mentoring curriculum will focus on areas dealing with self-awareness, uh, resume building, or have components dealing with mindfulness activities. As a student, being able to connect with a trusted adult at the palm of your hands is huge. 
most of our students, especially at the high school level, have access to a mobile device. While great things were happening at this one site, we realized that we needed the same type of attention throughout the district, especially during this period of big emotions involving social justice issues, uh, culturally relevant education, social and emotional learning, and simply the outbreak of COVID-19. The need to maintain relationships was at an all time high. What transpired over the last five months, I'm sure was overwhelming for many people. Change is hard for people, especially when they feel as though their needs aren't being met. Although the mentoring app at this high school remains active, the Office of Student Life with volunteers and Mentor Newark work collectively from March on to pilot the district-wide mentoring app. This gave us the opportunity to catch potential glitches and just to stay connected during this time. As a community of 20 mentors and mentees, we engaged in routine exchanges, challenges, and topics. The app is now available on Apple and Google Play. And in the initial stages of matching, we started at the school and district level, and then we have the opportunity and plans to branch out to external partners. I'm mindful of the mentoring resources that were offered on the mentoring app, one of which was Photo Voice, which is a participatory action research method that uses photography to explore community-based issues to initiate change. I'm also mindful of the Mentors Black Youth Town Hall or Michael B. Jordan's Mentor in Real Life video clip. And finally, the link to check out the top 10 activities that you can do with your mentor. As we begin to tackle current events, ranging from Breonna Taylor or George Floyd that often came up by students. On the back end of the app, you could see fruitful conversations that led to peaceful demonstrations, artistry, and just simply words of encouragement. As a team, we were also able to learn of students who experienced grief and loss during this last five months. And the reported cases shared with my office, we completed well over 42 grief and loss outreach visitations with our students and their family. I'm not only appreciative of these partnerships, but I'm blown away by its potential to lead to positive outcomes for students and their respective mentors. It's so funny because oftentimes as adults, we feel as though we're helping students when in fact they're helping us. From a professional standpoint, pairing students with mentors will enhance their skill sets when making informed decisions, leading to healthier individuals as they pursue their unique pathways to lifelong learning, while mentors are extended the opportunity to serve and stay connected to the community. And my personal experiences under my mentor's tutelage, I have been able to accomplish a great deal and will continue to pay it forward as adults have mentors too. I trust that my experiences, like my experiences, students will also benefit from the tremendous establishments of these partnerships, such as the Kears Institute with Boston University, uh, Mentor National, Mentor North, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Essex, Hudson and Union, and then come back and serve as mentors in our district. In alignment with our district strategic plan, we will expand mentoring opportunities to all students through peer mentoring and group mentoring as well. The steps to achieving the one-to-one -one mentoring are outlined in our district strategic plan. E-mentoring by way of this mentoring app is only the beginning to this global approach. To develop our relationship strategy, we will lead professional development, 
uh, primarily virtual trainings will provide resources and support support systems for the implementation of the district-wide mentoring program. This will be achieved through our design labs. The design labs will grant all stakeholders the opportunity to engage in in-depth conversations centered around mentoring strategies. I'm so humble and excited about this emerging initiative as it comes to full circle for me as a former student in the district, an educator, a mentor, and a leader. Mentoring relationships based on quality curriculum management can help all students, especially those facing unique challenges, navigate through those situations, which is prevalent amongst marginalized students. Mentors possess the ability to make a profound difference in the life of our youth, as well as strengthening communities. In addition, building positive mentoring relationships will extend a network of game changers to lead to a promising future, create college and career pathways, and establish a core belief that students are the leaders of today. As I close, life brings forth some interesting moments. The key to it, whether good or bad, is how you elect to respond to them. I acknowledge that it may be difficult for young children or teenagers or even adults to be able to respond to these situations. You know, and, and in my family, along with Dr. Sammy Kessler, we started Catherine's Closet, an organization dedicated to giving out scholarships and prong gowns to young ladies in need. My sister wrote in her college admissions essay, people will know my name, not for fame or fortune or out of vanity, but they will know me because I've helped someone. To have access to support managed through relationships and the use of technology, it's like magic because you never know how much impact that provision has had on someone's life. Today, I still have a relationship with Brenda that has blossomed over the years. She's not only my mentor, she's my friend, she's my sister. I never thought I would be able to recover from that dreadful day back in 2002. To have a platform to share my story and to share numerous accounts of how much a difference relationships makes and keeps me motivated and it inspires me to continue to do the work that is needed to give our students a world-class education they so deserve. With that in mind, I elect to inspire, love, forgive, and educate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Courtney. Um, that was really inspiring and to take your tragedy really and turn it into something that's going to affect, uh, positively affect so many youth and so many adults, mentors uh, in your community is really wonderful. Um, and the work that you're doing with Mentor Newark uh, looks like it's, um, it's moving forward pretty quickly. Uh, and so there were just a, a few questions, if that's okay. I'm just curious. Uh, so they people can find the app in the app store uh, in apple's app store is that what you said where can they find the app yes so it's the mentor north app mm -hmm. and you can just go ahead and download it um right now we have it available to our internal staff we are doing our recruitment with our teachers our school counselors social workers administrators and then at some point we will extend that opportunity to our external partners as well. And that is through Big Brothers, Big Sisters, who's going to help us with the matching components and the recruitment as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then what are you using the leaderboard for? Okay, so the leaderboard is the gamification component. And so we will send out weekly challenges um, one of the challenges that I referenced was with Photo Voice. So during this time, we did encourage participants to just share pictures in the community as to 
you know, things of interest, things that were happening. I'm, I'm mindful of one picture that just had like a couple of vacant lots in the city. So how can we work together to beautify uh, this space? And so if you are conversing with each other, you're posting information between the mentor and the mentee, then you're earning points. And so uh, the peers who had the highest number of points have earned gift cards, <laughs> who have earned uh, paraphernalia, you know, t-shirts, uh, uh, pens, stationery, you name it. And so that's what the leaderboard is all about. And is that also, how are you tracking the students? Like, so is that also the way that you're actually tracking the students and kind of understanding the number of times the mentors and the mentees meet? How are you that, doing that? That is correct, Pamela. So on the back end, we can monitor conversations, right? Because we want to make sure that the students are safe, but in the same breath, we want to make sure that the conversations are driven by the mentoring curriculum and that the conversations, even though students have the ability to, you know, reach out about a, a personal interest or a concern that they may have at that time, but on the back end, we can make sure that when they're earning their points, that it aligns with the focus for that week. Mm -hmm. That's great. And uh, are you, what, what is your expansion plan? I'm really curious, like you tested it out now. Mm -hmm. um, so when do you want, is it like you're going to go for, you know, 500 students by December and then how, what's your growth plan? I'm just really curious about that. It's a great question. So when we started the app at that one particular high school, you know, that was just that one site. Um, it had a capacity of holding up to 10,000 users. Now the current app has a lot of bells and whistles because on it, it can hold up to 50,000 users on this app. And so we're trying to streamline our communications. Our superintendent can send out mass messages to all of the schools, all of the mentors, all of the mentees. We can spotlight things, great things that are happening in our high schools. So our primary goal is to target our 2,200 high school seniors. And what is so unique about this partnership. It's not like a, a one and done approach. We are asking our, and challenging and charging our mentors to work with the young person until they complete college or land their first job. So this is um, a lifetime, if you will, or a commitment in, in my particular story, you know, just to be able to have someone work with me as a teenager up into you know adulthood. And so that same sentiment is it's being reciprocated here with the mentoring app and, and our plans to move forward in our district. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you so much, Courtney, for sharing your story and really how it yeah. inspired you to do what you're doing in the district and you know partnering with um, Big Brothers Big Sisters. I mean, I just think it's all really great and I can't wait to see what happens with it. Um, I'm sure everybody else is going to want to see that as well. So thank you. And um, I'm sure there are more questions here. I'll be sure to get you the questions. Uh, and maybe, um, you know, we're going to be, rec we've recorded this and we're going to be sending it out to folks. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get your contact information in case folks have some questions because I, I, they do. So thank you. Thank you, Pamela. All right. Okay. Well, that wraps it up uh, almost. I got a few more things to share. Um, just want to share with you that we always want to remind you about the other ways that you can connect and find resources. Um, Mentor Scales Impact by developing and supporting a national network of affiliates. Uh, these affiliates provide the leadership and infrastructure necessary to support the expansion of quality mentoring relationships in local communities or statewide. I mean, we saw that just here with Newark, um, which is great. Mentor affiliates really can serve a unique role as a clearinghouse for training resources, public awareness and advocacy. So we really encourage you to find out uh, whether you have an affiliate in your region and please connect with them to learn about local resources and training opportunities. Um, additionally, we encourage you to register your program with our uh, the Mentoring Connector. This is a national database of mentoring programs 
Uh, it's a zip code searchable database, and it really allows mentors and mentees from across the country to find their program and is connected to LinkedIn, NBA Cares, Mentor.gov, and so many other avenues for a really free program promotion. So please do take advantage of that. And then finally, check out the OJJDP, the National Mentoring Resource Center website uh, for no co cost mentoring resources to really help you apply evidence-based mentoring practices to your own programs. Uh, the Resource Center provides evidence reviews on mentoring models and mentoring for special populations, um, implementation resources, really from training manuals to mentor guides. Uh, and everything is reviewed by uh, the National Mentoring Resource Center's uh, research board and the opportunity to request no cost training or technical assistance also exists at that site. So please do check that at, out as well. And uh, we will just conclude here. Again, you know, thank you everyone for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you will join us for more webinars. We've got a lot of webinars going on um, over the next few months here um, around uh, really virtual mentoring uh, for schools, around workforce development. So we hope to see you soon again. And please have a great day. And it looks like I even got you out a couple minutes early. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hope to see you again here soon. And take care, everyone. Bye-bye.